Okay, so we're talking about SI units and conversions, and like I said in class, this is just something that you're going to have to memorize. Um, and it's not because I'm trying to be mean or make you do extra work, it's just because this is something we use every day in chemistry. And so, like, understanding how we're measuring things and what we measure them with is really important for this whole class. Chemistry is a comprehensive course, so everything just builds on itself. So we want to be familiar with these units, okay? So the first one I'm going to talk about is meters, and meters is what we measure length in. So they're kind of like a foot, if you have to think about it like that. Please don't. Uh, liters is what we measure volume in. So think about liters as being like a gallon, or for liters it's more like a quart. Okay, so that's how we measure volume in SI units. And then grams is how we measure mass. Remember, mass is not the same as weight. Um, but mass and grams are kind of like pounds. Okay, so these are our SI units. These are some of the key ones that we're going to be working with this year. And they have these prefixes, right? So I've heard a bunch of you saying King Henry died, uh, this is like base, so like drinking chocolate milk. So that's good, that's a good way to remember it. And we know that this is gonna be Desi, Centi, Millie, and this is gonna be Kilo. So those are the only ones that I want you guys to memorize because these are the ones that we're gonna use the most. Okay, and this, this is your base. So kilo is a thousand times more. So a thousand times more than my base is gonna be a kilo. And then deci, we start getting less. Okay, so I'm gonna say deci is 0.1 because I'm 10 less than my base. So if you think about it, 10 times this 0.1 is gonna get back to my base. Centi is 0.1 and milli is zero, zero, 001. So you can see that we're just moving over by tens. Okay, we're just to get from this step, we're multiplying by 10, to get to this step, we're multiplying by 10. So that's the really nice thing about SI units is that everything's in your unit of 10, which means that it's super easy to convert between them, if you know how. So let's take the example of going from kilograms to grams. And let's say that I have four kilograms. First of all, I want to think about what I know. So I know that a kilo is going to be, we'll just do like a little cloud bubble, how about that? This is going to be what I know about this. A kilo is going to be a thousand, and grams are going to be that base, that U. Which means that I will need a thousand grams right, because going this way, I'm gonna multiply to have one kilogram. So if I look back up here, I see that I'm at my base, so I'm gonna multiply 10 times 10 times 10 to get from grams to kilograms. And that's gonna be 1,000. So when I think about this, if I think about it logically, a gram is a smaller way of measuring than a kilogram. So my number should be going from a smaller number to a bigger number, right? Because kilograms are gonna be less exact than my grams, and so because I'm using that smaller unit, I still have the same amount, I still have this four kilograms, but they're gonna get bigger. So if we say four kilograms, and I know that for every one kilogram, I have a thousand grams, right? I said that down here. So a kilo is a thousand. If I have a thousand grams, I have one kilogram. And now this just becomes four times a thousand. So 4,000 grams. Okay? 
So a lot of you are struggling with this when it comes to density. And just remember like this thought bubble. Just draw it out up here. Say where you're going. Think about where you're starting, where you're ending, and how you're gonna get there. So let's do one in the reverse order. If I have four grams, and I'm trying to get to kilograms, in my thought bubble, I'm gonna say that it takes me 1,000 grams, if I could write 1,000, to get to that one kilogram. So I'm gonna still have my three tens. But now that I'm going from a smaller way of measuring to a larger way of measuring, my number is going to get smaller. And it gets smaller because if we say like over here, let's say that this is a gram, okay? and I'm measuring this gram, so I'll measure this line here, and I see that I have four grams. A kilogram is a thousand of those. That's how many equals one kilogram. So let's just pretend that the kilogram goes on forever. We'll do dot, 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 and it ends. So this kilogram is not going to be as, as precise at measuring and the number, the number of kilograms I can fit into the same space is gonna be a lot less. So I should be dividing here. So I'm still gonna multiply these tens to get to my thousand, but now I'm dividing by a thousand, and I'll show you why. So we set it up again, we have the four grams, and we're gonna multiply it by, I said that it would take me 1,000 grams, to get to one kilogram. So make sure your units are canceling. I forgot to do that up here, but make sure your units are canceling. Think of this as like four over one. And so this equals, now I have my grams have canceled out, so I've got point zero zero. let me make sure I'm doing this right. Basically just going over three spaces. I don't wanna mess up for this video. So if I'm at point four, Zero, zero, one, two, three. Yep. So I thought point zero zero four kilograms.